celebrate. At least I am. I'm going to invite you to join me in this celebration. I'm here to celebrate the life of God. Spirit expresses itself as my brother Bobby. I'm here to celebrate the goodness of God expressing itself as my brother Bobby. I'm here to remember, to remember that God is truly all that there is in the midst of all things. I'm here to celebrate the joy, the love, the hallelujah that I feel. I'm here to celebrate. So here at the East Bay Church of Religious Science, a center for spiritual living, the way we start anything is by way of prayer. By way of prayer. So I ask you all to go in with me. Go within with me. If you choose to close your eyes, focus your attention on the breath which you are breathing. For the breath which you are breathing is the breath of God. Life giving and life sustaining, life sustaining. And it is the only breath that there is. So I recognize the power and presence of spirit expressing itself as all things. I recognize the power and presence of spirit expressing itself as my brother Bobby Eddings. I recognize the power and presence of spirit expressing itself as you. For I truly know who you are and what you are, regardless of appearances, regardless of opinions, even your own. God is truly all that there is. So I bless this time together as we celebrate the life of Bobby Eddings. I bless this time as we remember the goodness, the joy, the playing of the bass guitar top that I used to love to hear my brother Bobby play. Yeah. We come together to celebrate the life which he lived. We come to celebrate the life which we are living. For the life that I am living is the life of spirit. It is the life of Mother Father God. And I invite each and every one of you to join me. To join me in celebration of the life which you are living. For it is the life of God living as you. For truly there is only one life, and that life is whole, perfect, and complete. So I just give thanks for the goodness of my buddy Bobby. I give thanks for each and every one of you. I give thanks for the love, for the joy that I feel within my heart. I give thanks for the hallelujah yes. being expressed in my brother Bobby. Yes. I give thanks for this and so much more. Yes. As I release these words, I let it go and I let it go. Yes. And I invite you all to join me in a week. This truth by saying, I shame. I shame. I shame. Amen. Amen. And so it is. Thank you. So now we will follow the order of service as outlined. This is my friend, my mentor, Brother Lee. Yeah. Yes, indeed. So, as I stated, we will follow the order of service as indicated in, uh, in your program. And Tyrone, I think we have a song that we by the men's chorus at the East Bay Church of Religious Science. Thank you.
Hello, family. This is the only time we get to take our masks off. Dear Lord to thee, dear Lord to thee, I long to be, I long to be, I won't dig a little deeper in the storehouse of love, love, eternal love. I love to shine, I love to shine, this love divine, with love divine. I want to dig, dig a little deeper in the storehouse. Of love, eternal love. Oh, dig a little deeper in God's love. Oh, dig a little deeper out in God's love. Oh, dig a little deeper in the storehouse of love, eternal love. Oh, just like a brother Jesus would. I wanna talk. Just just like a good Christian should Dig a little deeper in the storehouse Of love, eternal love Oh, dig a little deeper where In God's love Dig a little deeper in God's love Dig a little deeper in the storehouse Of love, eternal love just like a brother Jesus oh, would, I want to talk. Just like a good Christian should, I'm going to dig, dig a little deeper in the storehouse. Say what? Uh. Dig a little deeper in the storehouse. Dig a little deeper in the storehouse of love, eternal love. Yes. All right, good job. Good job, good for Bobby, okay? okay? The love of God Oh, 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 oh,
the love of God will be a friend the Church Men's Course, The Love of God. The Love of God. The Love of God. Felicia, Jeff, please, with our obituary. And Cayman, Jeff, please. From the energy of the love of God, a reading from James chapter 1, verse 12. Blessed is the one who preserves under trial. Blessed is the one who preserves under trial. Because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. Blessed be to God. Amen. Let us turn to the obituary. I'm going to read the entire thing. And Cayman is going to hold the energy. Yes. 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 which is what Bobby did for him yes, when he was one and a half years old. Yes. And he came to church with a little plastic guitar from Toys R Us. <laughs> Toys R Us has since gone, but the energy that Bobby left within the children is still there. So Cayman represents all the children that Bobby touched. Yes. Bobby Lewis Eddings was born in Oakland, California on April the 2nd, 1957 to his parents, Robert and Lossie Eddings, both deceased. He, had, he was the youngest of four children, Annie L. Baker, Freddie L. White, and Betty J. White. Bobby's spiritual journey began at an early age with his mom, Mother L. Brown, deceased, where he attended church service with her regularly right by her side. Bobby really loved his mom, and as an adult, Bobby later joined the East Bay Church of Religious Science in Oakland, California, and was a cherished member of the church community, graciously serving in various ministries and mentoring to the youth. He served as bass player and as music teacher to the church. Bobby attended Lockwood Elementary School, Havencourt Junior High, and Castlemont High School. Bobby worked for and later retired from a grass steel company in Berkeley, California. He also taught music classes at Blue Bear School of Music in San Francisco. Wildcat Community Free School, where Cayman went to elementary school, and gave many private lessons to children and adults. Bobby was a gifted musician, guitarist, and songwriter. He began taking guitar lessons in his early childhood. After his fa father's passing, he really focused his attention to the guitar. Music really helped him cope with his father's loss and brought positive energy. He could be found in his room spending two to three hours daily practicing and fine tuning his notes. His special interest was the bass guitar. He was a man of many musical roles 
occasionally playing the drums, and at times he would even sing. Bobby was signed to Armour Records at 17 years old and toured with the Variations Band, famous for the hit, Saying It and Doing It. He played the bass guitar for bands all over the Bay Area. Some of the band's names were Special Requests, Pride USA, Clyde Street, and Funk Monster, to name a few. The Clyde Street Band performed at the Serenade Lounge on weekends for nearly 10 years. Bobby was a rare combination of someone who had a love of life and a firm understanding of what was important, the simplicity of living a life with those you love. Bobby loved purchasing shoes, tennis shoes to be more precise, <laughs> he enjoyed riding his motorcycle and working on and driving his cars. He enjoyed comedy and horror movies, live concerts, and of course, going out to eat. Going out to eat a lot. <laughs> he loved seeing new places and discovering new things. Sadly, Bobby made his transition on August 18, 2021 in Berkeley, California. He leaves to cherish his daughters, Irene, Scott, Edward, Robin, Eddings, all, and Deanna Hampton, Corey. His loving sisters, Annie L. Baker, Willie, Betty J. White, and brother, Freddie L. White, Sr. Gan grandchildren, as well as a host of relatives, nephews, nieces, cousins, and many friends who are here today. Bobby will be remembered and missed by everyone who knew him and loved him. Bless be to God. Amen. Thank you, Felicia and Cayman. Now we have a slide presentation. on the life of Bobby Eddins.
and power rests in love. Rest in power. Rest in love. So let's breathe that in. Let's breathe in that power, the love. Let's breathe in the goodness, the joy. Let's breathe in the power and love. Thank you, Bobby. Thank you. So let's hear another selection from the men's course of the East Bay Church of Religious Science. This is one of Bobby's favorite songs. I just love playing. It's called Wherever I Wherever I Go. I 
May shout, may spirit shout to you. For God is truly in the midst of all things. There is a power and a presence expressing itself as my brother Bobby. So we're here to celebrate. We're here to celebrate the home going of my brother as he continues on his journey. As he continues on his journey of awakening. And I say as you continue on your journey of awakening. For God is truly in the midst of all things. So as we continue, I forgot to introduce myself. I am Reverend Anthony Jackson. Thank you. Thank you. And how many of y'all know Reverend Anthony? Just raise your hand. Just raise your hand if you know anything about Reverend Anthony. Raise your hand. So I saw quite a few of you raise your hands. 
And this is, we all love Bobby, that's why we're here. We're here to show our celebration, to celebrate the life of Bobby and to show our love. So, this is your opportunity. And the reason I had you raise your hand when I made reference to Reverend Anthony is something very important that I'm getting ready to say, and I want you all to hear me. And if you act like you don't hear me, I will remind you. You got two minutes. You got two minutes, not three, not two and a half, two minutes. Don't have Reverend Anthony remind you. So the microphone is open. So we'll take a few, not a lot, a few words of love, words of appreciation. Two minutes. <laughs> so you could use which mic you could use this microphone here? This one and this one. So you could come up, make a line, two minutes, and Rev don't have Reverend Anthony remind you that you only have two minutes, but I will. I will. And those of you who know me know I will. So please come forward. You're welcome. Good afternoon. I met Bobby in like 1980. And from that relationship, we had Robin. I'm forever grateful because I'm getting ready to cry. Oh, yeah. With that being said, she has made us the most proudest parents ever. And I want her to know that her daddy is proud of her. He's always going to be looking down on her. And I want her to always hold on to Jesus' hands. He is the way, the truth, and the light. He's the only way. So I want Deanna, I want Robin. You tell Irene that you guys got to do it that way so you can be okay. <laughs> it's a cold world out here. So Bobby, he, he fought a good fight, you know, and, he, and he, he was very connected with God in his own way. So just carry that, his legacy on, and just keep doing what you're doing, okay? Thank you. Hello. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am Terrence Hunter. I am the former member of the Alpha Omega Band. And uh, Bobby was like um, 16, 17 years old when I started with him. And we had a good time. There's some pictures of him. You guys got it. And um, Dwayne couldn't make it because he had an incident at his place. So he couldn't come. He was coming over here, but he couldn't make it. He said his condolences to the family. And Michael. Zeno, the, the other player, he could make, he's in Stockton, Stockton um, in, uh, Sacramento, he couldn't make it either, but he said condolences to the family. I'm just here with you guys and keep you here in, in spirit. Also, he has a song with the variations that we put together at 16 years old on um, YouTube, and the music is called Put the Music on Funk. So if you guys look on YouTube, you'll see it, and you'll see us when we, we won't be, it's a little, Little CG, little record thing, and you'll see the music on there, and you'll it'll play. That's us when we was like 14, 15 years old. So that's what I want to say. Yes. Hi, East Bay. I think most of you know me. I'm not going to sing. I can barely talk. <laughs> um, uh, but uh, when one of my friends passed away many years ago. Um, I didn't speak, and I felt um, I have to, mm -hmm. so I'm going to do the best I can. 
Um, <clears throat> so um, I was about 12 or 11, I can't remember, uh, when my grandfather passed away. And I don't remember a whole lot about that time, but I remember my aunt saying simply, he raised me. And um, I don't remember a lot about that time, but um, just remembering that and thinking about that in this moment, um, I didn't fully understand until now. Uh, Bobby helped raise me. Uh, he drove me to school. He cheered for me at sporting events. He held my hand across the street. He cussed people out on my behalf. And he told me when I was being a pain. Losing a parent is something inevitable. We try to prepare for it. Um, no parent wants to bury their child, so we hope that this is the natural order of things. <sighs> Even with his prolonged illness, I wasn't ready. I don't remember a life event that he wasn't there for. Uh, years ago, my father and I were at the movies trying to decide what to watch, and I suggested a movie called Taken. If you know about that movie, uh, my father said, is that the one where the guy's daughter gets kidnapped? Uh, no, I don't want to watch that. <laughs> Realizing he was right, I was like, oh yeah, okay, let's watch something else. Uh, months later, I had forgotten about it, and I was with Bobby at the house looking for something to watch, and I said, oh, take it. And he said, is that the one where the guy's daughter gets, take, gets, gets kidnapped? And, I was, and he said, I have four daughters. Why would I want to do that? <laughs> And uh, I laughed at the time at, you know, fathers in general, but um, Bobby wasn't my biological father, but he loved me as his own. I'll think of him when I hear the bass line of I'll take you there, visit restaurants we used to frequent, or if I see a Jerry curl. <laughs> I am so grateful for the time that I had with him. I know he loved me and I hope he knew I loved him. I will miss him forever. Mm -hmm. uh, Mark, I, I have to look really quick. It's not it. Um, I, I, things I remember about Bobby is um, how loving he was and how um, supportive he was to me through some of my struggles with addiction. And um, when he called me to help, help him build this wee stage here with the steps, and he'd get up and sometimes a bit too loud, but um, <laughs> he was the best, um, sorry, bass player. And I've heard a lot coming from a musical family and my dad worked some of the greats. Bobby was it. He had a very distinctive um, smell when he hugged you and he, he loved to hug and I, I, I swear I can, damn. I really loved him. And he would hold Corey in the kitchen after um, the rehearsals with Rodney and Daryl. He was clearly kind of the boss. It was just funny. He'd go up and get loads of donuts for everybody. Him and I had a code that we would do where you just, we'd look at each other after church and he'd go, we'd just say a day of the week. And that meant we were going to meet a starving musician until they asked us to leave. <laughs> we're going to go to the Oaks Club, we're going to go to the movies, and then we were going to drink beer and play pool. And uh, if I had a place to stay, I'd, away I'd go. If not, I'd stay at his house. Uh, Bobby, and he would always help my mum, always help my mum. Uh, I miss you, brother. I love you. Thank you. Wow. First day I came to East Bend, um, I saw the choir, I saw Rev. Me, and I saw Bobby and Vanessa by themselves, no drummer. I talked to Michelle that day. I went to rehearsal and I started the next Sunday. And that started a long, long friendship with Bobby yes. and with East Bay.
I don't mean to be up here snotting and crying and stuff. <laughs> Woo! Bobby showed me so much love <laughs> over the years. He taught me so much about music. He hired me to play in a band. It was funny because we played for, uh, I think it was, I forget, the, I forget the name of the band, but they were like a, a OJ type of thing. They changed and stuff, and I'm just playing cracking up because it was funny to me. But it was such an experience that Bobby took me kind of as a little brother, a little musician brother. But, uh, you know, over the years we talked, I was in Alaska one time and I was telling him about a moose that was in the backyard and you know how Bobby liked to laugh. And he, he, that story was just, he would tell everybody about that story. He's like, man, I was talking to Daryl, man, he was talking about the moose was in the backyard. And, and he would just start laughing, you know how Bobby would laugh and uh, tell stories and stuff. Um, and we, we created a, a cool bond. Bobby would call me sometimes and uh, just check on me, and I would call him back and check on him. And he'd come by my shop, I'd go by the house, and we would just talk. And uh, you know, he said, man, I love you. And I said, man, I love you too, bro. Mm -hmm. I went to see Bobby the Sunday before he passed. I didn't know what to expect because I talked to him maybe two weeks before that. He said, man, bring me some cheeses and some 7-Up. Mm -hmm. I was just so busy. I just want to say this. Never get too busy to see a friend. Mm -hmm. Never get too busy. I had them cheeses in my car for two weeks. I didn't know what to expect when I saw him. And he was so sedated. He was just really trying real hard to see who I was. The thing about Bobby, you know, I'm an OG, so I'm like, you know, you hear this word today talking about influencer uh, on social media and stuff. And Bobby was an influencer. <laughs> In so many ways, he was in the front. The day I saw him, I, uh, you know, Bobby, he, he would come here, man, and either rehearsal or Sunday, and you know, every su every Sunday, every maybe two or three Sundays, he'd have a different bass, mm -hmm. or a different amp, mm -hmm. or some kind of gadget. And I'm a, I'm a gadget guy myself. And I, you know, and I sit down and be on the drums, and I look up, and he had this, just pretty bass, like just like man, it looked like it was made out of a tree in the middle of Africa. It was all like one. I was like, man, where'd you get that? The knobs was good. Everything was just beautiful. And I know two minutes. <laughs> I know, I know, but. You know, he was that type of, the day I went to go visit Bobby, it was around the corner from starving musician, and I went to go get some drum stuff, and I saw this bass. And I, I was like, I messed with it for a little bit. And then I was gonna go back to see Bobby maybe two or three days after I saw him that day. And I got the call that he passed. Mm -hmm. And uh, I went and bought that bass. Thinking about Bobby. That's, that's my forever connection to you, brother. <laughs> I'm going to play it as much as I can, man.
thank you. Thank you for the letter that you gave me. Thank you, Bill. I really didn't think this was going to be so hard. I knew Bobby before Fiamme did. Bobby was my sister Wilhelmina's husband's friend. I met Bobby at San Pablo Park. He was a very different man than who you church people know. I was scared of him, OK? My sister had Bobby give me a ride, not my sister find me, my big sister had Bobby give me a ride one day. And uh, this is the story I tell everybody about Bobby. So he was giving me a ride, and I have long legs. So I reached down to adjust my seat. And Bobby said, don't put your hand under there and find something you ain't looking for. <laughs> I never rode with Bobby again. <laughs> Because those of you who know me know I'm a little, I'm timid. That scared me. I was like, oh, okay, that's who you are. All right. Um, so I knew him for years and years and years, and then he met Faimi and da 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 da. And then he started playing at the church. And this is another story I always tell about Bobby. My sister Faimi took the practitioner course. And I swear to God, Bobby became a practitioner. It changed, every, I wasn't afraid of him anymore. I mean, Bob, everybody started going to talk to Bobby. I was amazed, because I remember him from the park. Like Ramiah said, you can, he will handle you. When she said he cussed people out for her, she wasn't joking. He will step to you, he didn't have a problem. That kind of stuff makes me nervous. Um, but, this last little time, my sister kept telling me that Bobby was gonna make his transition. She kept telling me. And now, I feel like my mother did when I was telling my mother that my sister was gonna make her transition. And she never heard me. The day, I, the day before my sister died, she didn't hear me. And I was watching her every day, like I was sitting beside her bed. So the other day, I went by to see Bobby, because when I go by and see him, he talked to me about going home. I'm going home. I said, Bobby, when you go home, who is going, how are you going to do that? You need somebody to be there to take care of you. He said, you're going to do that. I said, I am. <laughs> I start calling people up. I call my friend Jay. Bobby said he's coming home. He's going to need some care. I need some help. I need a backup. So this is where my brain was. And I went to see him, and he was asleep. And you know, I'm an Oliver, I can be long-winded. I decided not to wake Bobby up, and I wrote him a note. Bobby, I came by to see you, Juanita, da da da, and I wrote my phone number. And the next morning, somebody named Robert called me and said, when did you leave this note? And I was like, who is this? And he said, well, Bobby passed, and I was calling to let you know. And I was, when I was with Bobby writing the note, thinking he was coming home, and me and Jay were gonna take care of him, Spirit said to me, and you're gonna be the last person to see Bobby alive. And I did not think anything about it. I wrote my note, because Bobby's coming home. I don't care what Fahimi say. And the very next day, he was gone. And Those people, those of you who have been here a long time and knew my father know, um, when my father died, I lost it. Lost it. Um, so much so that my family still is careful <laughs> when somebody dies around me. It's like, who gonna tell Juanita? Cause you know, she can't handle that. But I learned to handle it with my sister. And now I learned even more how to handle it with my brother. Um, Bobby was somebody who I knew when people bother me, 
I got somebody to call because I'm scary and he's not. And I don't know now if I still have that in my world. Um, that's somebody who's not afraid to the level Bobby was not afraid. Um, which is amazing to me, to see somebody who was that not afraid of things. Um, I had to say something because Bobby was my friend and I know his friends from the park and everybody couldn't be here so the legends of San Pablo Park are representing y'all. I know some of y'all are out there, I see you. Um, those are Bobby's road dogs, y'all. <laughs> really. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I was a postman and uh, and when I came to East Bay and they wanted me to sing, I was like, right. And he was like, always with me. You, 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 you tough, you tough, you, oh, you great. But there was one time this person that was singing and he talked about me and Bobby went off. He was cussing up a storm. Huh, what? He, I was like, woo. He says, I'm gonna I'm get him, I'm gonna get him, I'm gonna get him. I was like, ooh. I said, it's all right, it's all right, it's, it's, it's all good. So I had to go to the mama. <laughs> I said, I said, ooh, I didn't know Bobby had all that, that, that venom in him. He was, he, he, he went boom. And so I, I was like, I, and, but then God came into his life and he changed completely. I was like, ooh, ooh, ooh. He, he was like, uh, you don't do that. No, uh, you don't do that. Uh, Michael, uh, 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 just, just, just come on down. When he, when he got his little, his little podium on the floor, he was so happy with that podium, baby. I was like, yes, that's what I'm saying. His personality completely changed. I saw God just coming out of him every, 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 every time he would sit up there, it started here, and then it, it ended there. And mm -hmm. I will always remember this is where he began to lie. He yeah. was wonderful. He, 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 he produced so many, so many wonderful people. And so I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Because without you, without you, without you, Before you, and I can truly tell you that I knew Bobby all of his life. I knew Bobby all of his life. I'm his sister, Betty White. And um, I can truly tell you some stories about Bobby, but it's wonderful, so wonderful to hear how he affected your life and how you felt about him because that was who he was. He met a multitude of people and he affected a lot of lives. My sister and brother weren't able to be here as well as other relatives because unfortunately we had another death in the family. My sister, Annie Baker, uh, lost her youngest son two days ago. And so she's not able to be here. But we still celebrate Bobby. And I had to be here for the family. Mm. Um, one story that many of you don't know about is when he first began playing the guitar, I tell you, it was really bad at the house. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because he would play one note over and over and over again. And we would ask him to close the door, but you just couldn't get that do 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 out of the room. <laughs> so 
you know, it's, as I said, he, become a, he became a wonderful magi magician, and I appreciate that. And I, I appreciate you. I, I can hear when you're speaking how you loved Bobby. And, you know, he brought joy. So that's a good thing. But however, I won't, my two minutes are coming up. <laughs> but, but I wanted to just thank you for coming. Also, thank you for loving Bobby and being there for him, as he probably was for you as well. So as a family member, I'd like to just say uh, his siblings, Annie Baker, Betty White, and Freddie White loved him too, Amen. as well as other family members. So thank you very much. Yeah, and, uh, and Corey, you guys have three minutes. No, take it. Take your time. Take as long as you want. Take long. Um, I regretted not speaking at my mom's memorial service, so I just wanted to say a little bit. I'm the baby daughter. Um, Robin is a middle child, and unfortunately, Irene is not here. Um, but I will speak for myself in saying that. Um, my dad was always there for me. Um, and in the passing of my mom, he, he really uplifted and encouraged me um, and helped me through that process. So now I don't have my mom to call and I haven't gotten over that. Now I've lost my dad and I don't have him to call to help me through the loss of my mom. Um, but he was a great dad to me. He was always there whenever I needed him. And um, I will really miss him. Um, I was his baby. Um, but I, I'm, I'm grateful to the Heavenly Father to have had him in my life um, for the years that he allowed for me to have him. Um, there are so many memories, so many words that will always be in my heart that I just, I'll never forget. Um, Growing up in a family where my mother was adopted, my dad was my blood connection. Right. And, and he made sure to always make himself available for me no matter the time, no matter the issue. And um, I thank you all for being here to celebrate him. Um, and I, that's... That's all I want to say. I didn't want to have any regrets not coming up and saying anything at my father's memorial. Because um, I wasn't sure if I would fall apart. So thank you all for listening and thank you all for coming. Thank you. We'll take two more and then that's it. Then we have a procedure for the rest of you to express love on behalf of Bobby. Oh my God. This is the hardest day of my life. Bobby and I were together for 25 years. <laughs> I met him on his birthday <laughs> in 1993. And we got married in our living room in 2009 mm. on New Year's Day. There's so many things I could say to add on to what others have said, but mostly what I want to talk about is 
how wonderful Bobby was with children. He was amazing with children and they loved him. Everywhere we went, it didn't matter where we were. If there was a baby present and that baby caught sight of Bobby, they would reach for him. Mm. It, it wasn't something he had to do in any way. They just were drawn to him. He had an affinity with children that I have never seen with anyone else before. Came in as soon as he could walk. He came running over to that corner. As soon as he could walk, every child in this church would gravitate to him. Once we were walking, we were just walking down the street and a woman was coming in the other direction with her baby on her back. And the baby caught sight of Bobby and would not let her keep going. Mm. She had to stop and let that child interact with him for a few minutes before he would let her go on. That's how amazing he was with children. He was an amazing musician, you all know that. <laughs> he had perfect pitch. I don't know if any of you understand that, but he, he could hear the note perfectly. Mm -hmm. And that is a rare thing. He had perfect pitch. He could play by ear as well as read music. And it made him an amazing musician because of that. So many times he would get a phone call from somebody who needed a bass player at the last minute today. We need you right now. And he could come, show up, and play. No problem, no rehearsal, no nothing. A perfect example of that was one night when the Cal Symphony was playing for this Persian musician who he was a superstar in Iran. And he came here to play at the Palace of Fine Arts. And the Cal Symphony needed a bass player and somebody just gave them Bobby's number and said, this guy can do it. And they called Bobby at the last minute of us, that same day, we jumped in the car. We went flying out to San Francisco. It was a storm. It was storming. And we got there, and they put the music in front of Bobby. And they felt like, oh, you must, you're going to have to need to rehearse a few minutes. We'll give you a few minutes. He said, kick it off. Mm. He, told the he told the drummer, count it off, man. And the drummer counted it off, and Bobby played every note like, it was, like he had been doing it all week long. Mm. It was just the most amazing thing. He got so many gigs just out of that one night. That is how amazing he was as a musician. But the most amazing thing about him of, of all, other people have alluded to it here, is he was an absolute hero and champion. Yes. If you needed somebody to stand for you, if somebody was messing with you, <laughs> mm -hmm. Bobby was the person to call. Bobby was absolutely the person to call. I have watched him stand up for so many people who could not speak for themselves. Yes, amen. So many people who were being a treat, treated bad or misused in whatever way, if he did not even know you, it didn't matter, he would stand for you. And he certainly did that for yes. me in the 25 years that we were together. <sighs> he was my champion. Yes. He was my hero. He stood up for me in so many situations when I was too afraid to stand for myself. <sighs> amen, amen, amen. We had our issues <laughs> mm -hmm. and we would fight <laughs> like crazy. You know, late at night we'd get into an argument about something. Bobby would call mom and tell on me. He would call my mother and tell on me like we were kids. He would go, Mama, she's doing it in this thing. And she would take his side. <laughs> the last time I saw him, I went to the hospital to see him. And uh, I asked him what he wanted me to do when this day came. And he said, I want you to wear yellow, and I want you to look like a flower. So.
Thank you. Okay, we have two more, and that's it. Uh, come on, you, you come first, and then came in. You, you go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. No, go ahead. Um, they say that uh, a friend is someone that knows all the bad things about you and love you anyway. Mm. That was my relationship with Bobby, Bobby from the 70s to now, you know. We, uh, men can get into our madness, our egotistical madness, and need to vent and get it out. The thing with me and Bobby is that we were ears for each other to vent. Mm. to get out the madness, you know, whatever was going on in our life, you know. I would listen to him. I wouldn't interrupt him. He wouldn't interrupt me. But at the end, just simply say, I love you, brother. And, uh, <laughs> and then we would part companies and come back to our senses. So I absolutely love this man because I've, I've shared so many mad things that I was feeling with Bobby. And Bobby has shared that with me. And we needed that just to get it out mm -hmm. and come back to our senses. So always have a special place yes. in my heart. My friend, yes. my brother. Thank you. Thank you. This will be our last year. Good afternoon, y'all. Um, I'm pretty sure most of y'all know me already. Uh, if y'all don't, uh, I'll just show my face for y'all. My name is Cayman. Uh, I've been here for a while now. Um, I feel like I feel like everybody has that that one person in life that God sends them just so that they could just help you just get past life and all the problems you're going through no matter what, and I feel like Bobby was that person for me, that God sent to me. And he used to be posted right up here, right over there on his wall, right here, up on the stage right here. And for those of y'all who have been with me this whole time I've been here, I've been beside him this whole time, just like he had for me. Um, I probably wouldn't be the person who I am today without him. Yes. And um, I heard when I when I heard he died, I that that night I was taking a nap or I was sleeping or something. And out of nowhere, I I just woke up. I woke up on my sleep and I don't know. I had this gut feeling like something wasn't right. I'm like what like what happened? I was just questioning myself like like why I feel like this. So I just, I, I couldn't go back to sleep or nothing, so I just, I just stayed up just all night. And then that morning, I, my mom came to my room and said, I, I got bad news. I said, what? She said, Bobby passed away in the hospital last night. Got room for one more, Reverend um, Reverend Mobile, we need two minutes. This, I wasn't planning on coming up and speaking on here mostly because I, I didn't really know the right words to say or nothing. or But I, I feel like he would want me to come up here to say a little something. So if he was still here, there's one thing I'd tell him just, thank you for being present. Thank you for being there at a time when I needed you most and you was there without even having me begging you to come. Thank you for standing up for me no matter what. Thank you for teaching me the things that have made me the person who have helped me evolve into the person I am today. And the only words that I can say to you, because just because you was bes I was beside you this whole time, he is still here beside me and beside all of us in this room. 
And the only words that I could tell him is just thank you for being present even yes. still now. Yes. Amen. Thank you. So well, thank you. <laughs> Reverend Mwata, we got a, oh. <laughs> why don't both, this is it, right. you two, this is it, that's right. that's Re, this is my mentor, so that's the only that's reason, the reason I got this, right? <laughs> that's the only reason, and you got two minutes, I'm going to use 90 seconds, uh, okay, <laughs> so it's like this, you know, I didn't really have anything to say, except while I sat there, God told me to get up and speak. I didn't come here to do this. Do this? Okay, thank you. All right. So, everybody was everybody's brother. Mm -hmm. You know, he wasn't just my brother. He was everybody's brother, so I know we miss him, we feel him like a brother. But Bob, you helped me take my game to the next level. Mm -hmm. Because when I was here, doing Wednesday Night Live, mm -hmm. and I'd go into spiritual mind treatment, and I'd had this thing I was doing, I was experimenting with singing my treatments, doing mm -hmm. some kind of rhythm behind my treatment. Mm -hmm. And Bobby could hear the rhythm that I was using. I didn't even tell anybody about that. It, just, it was just what I was doing that. Bobby got up, he came up here, and he started playing that bass, man. Boom, 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 boom. And man, when you're praying, yeah. And you've got that bass line coming in and yeah. somebody knows what they're doing like that. We was getting <laughs> yeah. healed up here on Wednesday night. Yeah. And he took it to a whole nother vibration. Yeah. And I know everybody who knows him and knows I mean, and I say knows him because he's still alive. You Amen. know, we, we're eternal beings. He probably took you to the next level too. Yeah. And that's what I'm gonna remember about is taking me to the next level. Bobby represents transformation for me. And uh, he was a man of extremes. He'd be the most kindest person mm -hmm. you ever met in your life. But if you need to handle some business, he'd be the most ferocious person Amen. you've ever had in your Amen. life. And that's a real brother to me. Thank you. God bless. Thank you. Come on. This is it. Lucy and you, you're the last one. All right. I'll be fast. I met that man when I was about 13, 14 years old. Mm -hmm. I was not a happy young man at that time. I was an outright jerk, actually. <laughs> Oftentimes to my mother. He stopped all that. <laughs> when we talk about how he would cuss you out in a minute, I know firsthand. <laughs> There's no checking like a Bobby Eddins checking. <laughs> and it took a long time to adjust to this new presence in my home. And I was mad, you know, mama, mama, why him? And come on, man, you see that Jerry curl, mama, really? <laughs> I remember when we went to Quickway by the lake, you know that place we call Vegan Mob now. And the guy working there was a little rude, a little aggressive. And I told him I wanted a triple cheeseburger, but then halfway through I decided I wanted a double cheeseburger. And pretty much he started acting really mean toward me. And I was intimidated. And so when I went back and said, that's it, I'm cool, he said, you know, Bobby said, how come you didn't get you a burger? I'm like, dude is tripping, let's just go. He already could tell I was scared. He walked up and told that man what I wanted. And he got to really act it out. I'm already knowing who this man is. This dude really had the nerve to start acting tough with Bobby Adams. <laughs> and I'm watching like, oh, all right, what's about to happen? He got super calm, Bobby did. This was a scary calm. This is what God mm. is watching over you calm. And he smiled and said, you know what, bruh? That's all right, don't worry about it. And the fright that overcame this man. He was practically throwing burgers at us, like, oh, no, no, brother, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, no, 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 come back. And that's when I realized, you know what? 
we might have a use for you after all. <laughs> we did not get along at first. We did not get along. When people throw around that term OG, just understand that an OG helped raise me. Yes. There is a reason I can walk these Oakland streets without any fear in my heart. He did that. Thank you so much, sis, for sharing your father with me. I have never ever called you anything but my sister. You know that. And I love you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So, come on. Use your brother, too. I'm going to take my mask off so y'all can see my face. Um, I'm the middle child of Bobby. Everybody say I look the most like him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I wasn't going to come up here and talk. My sister pushed me to do it. Um, my relationship was very different than everybody who has spoke today. Um, we had an off and on relationship. I came here not knowing what to say, what I wanted to say, how I should feel, what I should feel. Um, it definitely was good to hear everyone's story of him. It gave me a different insight. Um, on my way here, I had a long talk with God and just asked myself, why am I going today? Should I be going today? Um, how should I feel? Um, and to be honest, at the end of the day, he's still my dad. Yes. Um, I still loved him. Um, and it's definitely to pay my respect um, and to make peace. Um, and to no longer hold on to the ill will that I had. I think for me, we didn't get along because we was too much alike. Mm. Um, listening to everyone's stories about how he would pop off and go at it with people. I am the exact same way. Um, I feel like I'm a protector and I'm ready to go to bat for anybody and listening to you guys' stories make me realize that's probably why we didn't get along because we were exactly alike. Um, but I just wanted to come up here and kind of just show who I am, share my stories, my insights, and just say thank you to everyone that has been providing your stories and the love that you guys have for him today. And I definitely appreciate to hear those stories. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh yes, thank you very much. Wonderful, powerful, a teacher. That's what I heard, a teacher. My friend, Bobby Eddins. Doc, you ready? The doctor, yes. the reverend, yes. Eloise Oliver. <laughs> I didn't have to speak at my daughter's funeral. And Bobby is my son. I didn't give birth to Bobby, but that was my son. I said I, I was not asked to do the eulogy for Mina's funeral, who's my daughter. And it's only because Bobby's daughter asked me, am I up here? Because it's like asking me to do the eulogy for Mawata because Bobby was my son. And your son, your family is not always the folks you were born into. Brother Ishmael, your family is the folk that brought you forward 
after you got here. That's your family. And so many times I hear people critics talk about their families and all they did for their family, but their family didn't give it back. It was never meant to be like that. When you got here, that's all your mom and dad had to do because everything you needed was here when you got here. Mm -hmm. And your folks didn't have nothing to do but get you here because God had provided everything you need. And so Bobby was my son. After Kwame went to Africa and Mawata lived in East Oklahoma, San Leandro or somewhere, I felt by myself. And I was renting my house on Airbnb. Now first I need to tell you that I went to all kind of dives with Bobby. Because <laughs> he would be playing at this place that I would never go and find me would call me and say, Mom, we down at the so and so and so. Come on down. I said, I don't go to places like that. Oh mama, come on, I'll meet you at the door. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll get there. One of them was a serenader. And I got there, and everybody was doing what everybody did. <laughs> but they all knew me for who I was. And you know, when you honor God, as old folks used to say, the devil would respect you. So I don't care what they were sniffing or snorting or whatever they were doing. <laughs> Whatever they was doing in the latest bathroom, said, oh, you Reverend Lee, I heard about you. Come on, go. <laughs> <laughs> and so I learned a lot. But I want you to know that man created time. Mm -hmm. And it ought to be a time where people can talk about their loved ones as long as they want to. Mm -hmm. Because when you have to suppress your feelings, it ends up in your body, and now you got to go to the doctor for something you could have got rid of at the funeral. So I don't believe in this two minutes. I'm sorry, I don't know where it come from, but it ain't right. <laughs> it is not so. I never been to the kind of funeral I'm thinking about, but we ought to have a dinner and go back and talk some more. Yeah. Because I honestly know from myself, whatever you didn't say, is lodged in your body. And you'll be going to the doctor. I've gone to the doctor for stuff I didn't say when William died, and I don't know how many years he'd been dead. But I went to this, some naturopathic doctor, and he started talking about the aches that I, pains that I had because of what I didn't say. So that's why I said, now let everybody say what they want to say. When Charles Rogers died, he, he had a little, some of his baby mama came up here and this girl got up here and she said, I was not a good mother, but he was good when he took care of the kids and I don't know what they're gonna do, damn. And everybody said, oh, she, 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 she can't say that, this is church. I said, baby, express yourself. That girl got up there, <laughs> she got up there and walked and she said, damn, damn, damn. <laughs> and that's all she said, but I said, it's all right, baby, just say what you feel. And she cussed the whole time, just one word, over and over again. <laughs> damn, damn, damn. <laughs> so that's how I feel about it. I feel like say what's in your heart. If you don't do nothing but talk to another person, and honestly, after, like we talking about, Barbara was my protector. We rent, I was renting my house on Airbnb. And one guy got so arrogant with me, he said, you can't put me out, because I know the Berkeley rental law. And I got on the ringy dingy, and I called Bobby. Bobby said, Mama, you better try to handle it the best you can, because if I have to come down there, somebody's going to die, and I'm going to jail. <laughs> and that's just how he was. That's just, he, ne he never made no apologies for his guns or none of that. But he came by that one time and that boy moved. I don't know what Bobby said to him, but he moved. And so I, I knew that, uh, I just heard that Bobby was born in Oakland. 
but somebody raised Bobby from the South. Bobby acted like black folks used to act. It didn't have to be but one man in the village, but he took care of everybody in that village. And that's how he was. He took care of every woman I know that, that didn't have a protector. All you had to do was call Bobby. Now, I just found out that he was like that with the guys, too, but I just thought I didn't know that. But I know that Bobby was a protector. And the last time I saw him, he said, Mama, I went there. And he said, I don't like this hospital food. Would you please make me some collard greens and okra? And so I took him. I cooked the collard greens. I didn't get there the same day I was supposed to, and he talked about me for that. <laughs> but I did. I got there, and I took him the collard greens and okra. And Bobby died from complications of diabetes. And I want to mention that because it bothers me that so many of the young people in this church are dying before me. I don't feel like I've got no business out living Bobby and Charles Rogers and Reggie Bass and all these other folks because when my mother died, I came from a religious family. My brother set a chair out there and said, Mama's gone to heaven. And all of y'all in here that don't know the Lord, come out here and sit in this chair. And we looked at each other like, that boy has lost his mind. Because nowhere in the program have we agreed to that. But I feel like now, Bobby fought a good fight. He finished his course. Now what you going to do? Because I cried when the day Juanita went by there with Sister Bertha By's funeral. And Juanita said, I'm going to see Bobby. And I said, and I'll meet you there. And then I had to do this and I had to do that. And I didn't go there. And the next day, I found out that Bobby had passed. And I remember that moment that my brother, I cried and I just went into hysteria. And it was like, why are you crying like this? And I realized something said to me, Bobby did what he came to do. What are the dreams? in your life that you have not fulfilled, because Bobby was way younger than you. So you need to get busy doing what you're crying about, which is the dreams in your heart that's unfulfilled. So I want to talk to you about your unfulfilled dreams. Because in my heart, Bobby should not have left me. So there's no time when somebody is gone and when your time is up. So get busy, get busy doing what your dream is. All of you, somebody know who I'm talking to. It's something you really want to do, and you just keep putting it off. This is happening, that's happening, that's ha What's that child's name? Started with me on a women's group. You know who I'm talking about, wave your hand. <laughs> And I've been going to do this and going to do that and going to do the other and going to do the other. So I realized that I was crying about my own unfulfilled dreams. So we don't, you know, it's, 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 it's per perfect to miss the body. But I have something here that I use, and it's a nautilus shell. And this nautilus shell is a, is a fish. It's a, what they call a mollusk, and it lives way down in the bottom of the ocean, and it goes down there and stay during the day, and it comes up at night, and it eats. And it's a little bitty worm as it starts out, and it lives, and then it starts to create its own shell. And when it moves out of one of these rooms, you see those little notches? It shuts the door. 
And so that's what you have done. You started out as a sperm. And then you started out. When you, was, when you stopped being a, a sperm, you had to shut the door on that area of your life. And you couldn't go back. And now you become a fetus. And then you lived in your mother's body for nine months. And you didn't have to worry about food or, or shelter or clothing or any of that because all that was provided. But the books say when the time has fully come, you was forced out and it shut the door. You couldn't go back that way, you had to go that way. So whatever you needed to learn, you learned it and, and you stayed at home and your mama took care of you and then it, it was time for you to go out in the world and the door was shut and you couldn't go back. You see these little notches? Every advancement that you made in life, there's no such thing as going back. The hands on the clock don't go backwards. Life don't go backwards either. So never mind what people didn't do and who didn't treat you right, that part of your life is over and the door is shut. Yeah. 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 Re <laughs> Reverend Margaret told me, once you know, you can never not know again. So the time of I didn't know no better, that's gone. The door, the door is shut. And so we've been pushed and pushed. I don't know how you got to the East Bay Church. I don't even know if you was the minister. I was the minister when you got here. But once you got to the East Bay Church, guess what? The door was shut because these people showed you some pure love. Can't nobody, that's one of the things that this church is known for, is unconditional love. Somebody say, I ha hallelujah. So you can't say, well, I didn't go to church because folk didn't treat me right. That door has been shut now. If you're here today, the door been shut. And somewhere and everywhere, there's gonna be a church door open tomorrow. So you didn't you, you found a place where people love you. We don't I don't believe we don't believe that there's a God up in the sky keeping score. So whatever you did up until today, it's all right with God. Because this old thing about God sees and God knows, and you don't have to confess no sin, because if God knows everything, he already knows that. So that door of, of you thinking that God is holding something against you, that door is shut today. So, 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 and when all of that is over, oh, hallelujah. The shell represents the body. When Bobby had done all that God assigned for him to do, he dropped this body. Yeah. 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 Fell on back down yeah. to the bottom of the ocean and that little worm started all over again. Oh God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come, our shelter from the stormy blast, and our eternal home. This is the day mm -hmm. that the Lord has made. And I don't care whether it's Bobby's funeral or 9-11, uh, it's my great-grandson's birthday. People were flying flags when we came down the way. All of these things are happening today. It's still the day that we can rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend Lee. Thank you. Yes, indeed. For well, this is the day of celebration. This is the day. This is the day. Thank you, Reverend e, for the reminder that this is the day. One thing I love to do, and it seems like I've been doing it quite a few times the last couple of months. Um, about two or three years ago, the Warriors basketball team, remember when they used to be good? 
and then, so, so I would go every now and then to, to one of their games when they were good. And, uh, yeah, right. And uh, when they would do something that the crowd really enjoyed, what would they do? So I think that, yes, they would stand and give them an ovation. I think we should stand and give our brother Bobby a standing ovation. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So we'll hear one more sound tune from the uh, men's course of the East Bay Church, and then we're going, I'll do a benediction and and make an uh, announcement concerning further get together. So please. Here's another favorite song of Bob's I'm going to do for you.
soul. I got the joy of the Lord down in my soul. I got the joy of the Lord down in my soul. Way, way down in my soul. I got the joy of the Lord down in my soul. Deep down in my soul. Down in my soul. Deep down in my soul. Down in my soul. Way, way down in my soul. I got the joy of the Lord down in my soul. portion of the celebration. Yes. I feel the joy. I feel the joy all over me. And I be still and allow the joy to express itself. Choose to allow the joy to express all over you. And everything you do and say, just know truly that God is all there is. Yeah. So we're, uh, one announcement, there is not a formal repass here at the East Bay Church, but reservations have been made at the Macaroni Grill that you, you, can, you could order what you want to order, but look at your purse first, because you'll have to pick up the expense of your lunch at the Macaroni Grill at 8,000 El Cerrito Plaza in the city of El Cerrito. So if you want any more information on that, come see me and I'll give it to you. So let us stand as we prepare to get out of here. So this has truly been a celebration. This has been a celebration of knowing, a celebration of remembering, a celebration of life that we call Bobby Eddings, a celebration of the goodness of God expressing itself as our brother Bobby. For we truly know that God is in the midst of all things. So I invite you just to relax just to release, just to let go of any attachment to any outcome. You get to call it what you want to call it. I choose to call it good. I choose to call the life that Bobby Eddings lived good and very good. I choose to say my brother, job well done. Well done, well done. Well done. I choose to say my brother, job well done. So as we go from this place, we go in knowing that God is truly all that there is and that I am, we are one with God expressing itself. I give thanks for the life of my brother Bobby Eddings. I give thanks for each of your life. For I understand beyond the shadow of the doubt that you are truly individualized expression of the one. 
The book of Genesis reminds me that I was created in the likeliness and the image of God. You were created in the likeliness and the image of God. For truly, God is all that there is. So as we continue to celebrate, as we continue to remember the, the life of Bobby Adams, we continue to know and to know that we know that God is and we are. And for this and so much more, I enjoy, I invite you to join me as I am eternally grateful for this day. I am eternally grateful for the life of Bobby Eddings. I am totally grateful for your life. For I truly know that God is and we all are. And for this and so much more, I simply give thanks. I simply give thanks. As I release, I let go, and I let God. And I invite you all to join me in anchoring this truth by saying, I shame. I shame. I shame. I shame. Amen. Amen. And so it is. And so it is. Thank you. So we're going to rock it out Bobby style, okay? Got a party all the way out of here. We're going to rock it out. Y'all ready? Everybody ready? One, two, one, two. Lisa, come on up here, baby. This is for my friend, Bobzilla. I know a place Ain't nobody crying No Ain't nobody worrying No No more smiling faces mm -mm. Lying to the races Yeah Somebody help me now I'll take you there I need a little help now. I'll take you there. I need a little help now. I'll take you I there. I need, 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 need a little help now. I'll take you there. I said, I know a place. Ain't nobody crying. No. Ain't nobody worried. No. No more smiling faces now. Mm -mm. Lying to the raisin. Yeah. Somebody help me now. I'll take you there. I need a little help now. I'll take you there. I need a little help now. I'll take you there. I need a need a need a need a little help now. I'll take you there. I said. Rich now, play your, play your piano now. Play your music. 
전다 Play on it, play on it. Ah, boom, 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 yeah, boom, boom. Yeah. Come ah. on now, play on it, play on it. Blessings and more blessings. <laughs> the people say. Blessings. Hey.